Based on a true story, a taxi driver participates in a simulated prison experiment for a big reward. However, chaos soon arises, leading to a chilling examination of human behavior. Tarek notices a newspaper ad seeking participants for a 14-day simulated prison experiment in exchange for 4,000 German marks. Intrigued, he attends the recruitment process the next day. A fellow applicant, Schute, recognizes him as a cab driver, but their chat is interrupted by Dr. Grimm, the director's assistant. Dr. Grimm assures the men that the experiment is painless and requires no medication. It focuses on group behavior in a prison-like setting, where participants will be designated as guards or prisoners based on their mental assessment. She emphasizes that joining means relinquishing their privacy and fundamental rights, a condition to which all agree. As everyone takes their tests, Dr. Grimm interviews Tarek, confused as to why he's driving a cab when he studied philosophy, architecture, and sociology. The man merely claims that his job is only temporary. After reviewing his test results, Dr. Grimm comments that his moral values align with a norm. She warns him that he might face extreme situations during the experiment. But since the experiment will be under surveillance, Tarek is confident that he'll be okay. Following this, Tarek meets his former employer Ziegler, who's still angry at his stunt that got him fired two years ago. Still, Tarek convinces him that the experiment is a compelling story to write about. So they strike a deal for the taxi driver to go undercover and gather evidence of the events. To do this, Tarek purchases glasses equipped with a built-in camera later on. Returning to the facility, Dr. Grimm guides Tarek to a reference test to prepare for the experiment the next day. It flashes random, mostly disturbing pictures to Tarek in an enclosed room, which makes him close his eyes. This has the scientist concerned if he's uncomfortable with confined spaces. While heading home that night, Tarek's taxi is hit by another car. Unharmed, he checks on the other driver, Dora, who shares that she is using her father's car and that she is coming from his funeral. Seeing that Dora can't drive her damaged car, the man takes her to his place and tends to her wound. He thinks that their meeting isn't a coincidence since he believes everything that happens has meaning. This makes Dora wonder what her father's death means. And Tarek just reminds her that all life has to end. The man then offers his bed to his guest, but she asks him to stay with her. This leads to them sleeping together. In the morning, Tarek wakes up alone with a note containing Dora's insurance information for his damaged car. The subjects later gather at the facility where they meet Professor Ton, the experiment's director. Professor Ton reminds them that the next two weeks will challenge their civil rights, so he gives them one last chance to opt out, but no one takes it. With that, the director explains that violence is forbidden, and any aggressive behavior will result in expulsion. Lars then leads the participants portraying the guards to a room where they receive uniforms and equipment. Professor Ton informs them that their responsibility is to maintain peace, enforce order, and ensure compliance with the rules. After preparing, the guards proceed to shower the prisoners, including Tarek, with a water hose before providing them with dresses bearing their prison numbers. They then lead them to the basement where the prison is situated. There, Bosch, one of the guards, announces the rules. The prisoners will be addressed by their numbers, while the inmates must refer to them as Mr. Prison Guard. They must not talk while lights are out, consume their meals entirely, and obey the guards' orders. Failure to adhere will incur punishment. Camps then assigns them to their designated cells, leading Tarek to meet his cellmates Joe and another prisoner who only introduces himself as his assigned number, 38. As this is happening, someone reviews the participants' prior interviews. This reveals that Shute is a kiosk owner, Camps is an executive, Bosch is a school teacher, Eckert is a performer, and Berus is an airline employee. Many cited financial reasons for joining, while others sought new and interesting experiences. While Lars and Dr. Grimm prepare tapes to record activities within the prison, they find that the participants are playfully embracing their roles. Joe shares with Tarek that he's an electrician, though Prisoner 38 refuses to share about himself and calls his cellmates by their numbers. Because of this, Tarek playfully guesses that his profession involves numbers, and Joe jokingly suggests he might be a bus driver. Finally, Prisoner 38 reveals that he is a lifeguard. Tarek decides to share a joke, sparking a trend among the prisoners. He then sits back and reminisces about his night with Dora, unaware that the woman is thinking of him too. During mealtime, Shute refuses to drink the milk included in the meal, claiming that it makes him sick. This goes against the rules stating meals must be consumed entirely, so Eckert orders the prisoner to drink it. Recognizing this as potential evidence, Tarek activates his spy glasses to observe the dispute. However, when the guard corners Shute into drinking the milk, Tarek seizes it and consumes the entire content. Once back in their cell, Prisoner 38 criticizes Tarek's actions. However, Eckert warns them against talking after lights out, so the cellmates quietly go to bed. In the guard quarters, Camps criticizes how Eckert allowed Tarek to disrespect 
does respect him. Acknowledging this, Eckert returns to the cells and orders Tarek to do push-ups as punishment for drinking Shute's milk. The prisoner protests and insults him, further infuriating Eckert, so he also commands his cellmates to do push-ups. The three prisoners reluctantly comply, and the other guards watch with satisfaction. The following day, Eckert gives Shute two choices, drink the milk or do push-ups. Tarek uses the chance to undermine Eckert's authority and encourages the prisoners to do push-ups together in solidarity. The prisoners happily oblige, much to Eckert's frustration. In the guard quarters, Berus prepares for his shift. Eckert subtly sniffs him and implies to his comrades that he smells, prompting laughter among them. The man remains oblivious to this as Eckert suggests doing a bed check. They proceed to Tarek's cell where Eckert deliberately messes up the bed to order the prisoner to remake it. Tarek activates his spyglasses and deliberately throws his bed sheet out of the cell. Infuriated, Eckert orders him to retrieve it, but instead, Tarek shoves Berus inside and locks the guards with his cellmates. As the trapped guards call for help, the rebellious man rallies his fellow prisoners and makes demands to the other guards. Bosch eventually lets Eckert and Berus out, but they struggle to keep the prisoners under control since they can't use violence. In a panic, the guards seek assistance from the scientists, but given that this is still part of the experiment, Berus hesitantly proposes using humiliation as a means of control. Following this, the guards use fire extinguishers on the prisoners and confiscate their beds and clothes. Berus then coughs Tarek out in the hall to isolate and humiliate him into compliance. Having seen this, Professor Tan later commends the guards for restoring peace, though he urges them to find a more appropriate measure for the next conflict. Later that evening, Berus gazes at the prisoners in despair, proving that his method worked. As the guard leaves, the lonely Tarek reflects on his night with Dora for some solace, unaware that the woman is trying to call him at that moment. As if offering peace to the prisoner, Bosch soon releases Tarek and lets him back in his cell. The prisoners are also allowed to retrieve their clothes and beds. The following day, Kamps emphasizes obedience to avoid punishment among the prisoners, leading Shute to release reluctantly drink his milk during mealtime, which makes him sick. The guards are later interviewed about this, and they justify that ensuring the prisoner's compliance allows them to keep the peace. Therefore, Shute drinking the milk was necessary. Meanwhile, with his spy glasses activated, Tarek asks Shute why he got involved in the experiment. The man confesses that owning a yellow Ferrari is his dream, so he needs the money. Tarek thinks this is mad, but Shute insists that having a dream is important. As if reminded of his goal, Tarek later teases Barris about his smell leading to a near-violent response. However, Berus backs off, knowing that he'll be out of the experiment if he hits the prisoner. The comment still bothers him later, so the angry guard washes up in the restroom. Curious about why the man is provoking the guards, Prisoner 38 investigates and discovers Tarek's spy glasses. He confronts the man about this, figuring that he's starting fights to capture something scandalous to sell. Tarek attempts to retrieve his glasses, but the man locks his arm behind him. With this, the driver wonders if Prisoner 38 is a soldier, given his strict compliance and skills. Quietly, Prisoner 38 reveals himself as Steinhoff, an Air Force pilot assigned to observe and report about the experiment to the military. Surprised, Tarek returns the favor and confesses that he is gathering evidence for a reporter. He then asks what will happen in this experiment, and Steinhoff shares that the team will provide a series of stressful situations to see how the men will respond. Satisfied with the truth, Steinhoff then returns Tarek's glasses. Elsewhere, Dora finishes packing up her father's office when she finds a book she gave him years ago. Still mourning, she checks his drawers and finds his gun, contemplating what to do with it. Ultimately, she drives somewhere while recalling her conversation with Tarek. She shared that her father was the most brilliant man she knew. In contrast, Tarek recounted how his father was harsh and used to lock him in a dark room, thus his fear of closed spaces. Meanwhile, at the guard's room, Bosch opts to go home but is told to stay since they're planning to deal with Tarek tonight. Just then, Comps notices Eckert carrying a gun, but the man assures them that it's just a blank gas gun. After their drinks, the guards wake Tarek and drag him to a surveillance-free room. They order him to withdraw from the experiment the following day. To ensure his compliance, they then happily shave his head and humiliate him, much to Bosch's horror. The next day, Dr. Grimm asks about Tarek's shaved head, and he lies that he requested it since he had an itchy scalp. When asked if he wishes to withdraw, however, Tarek refuses. Camps then escorts him back to his cell, emphasizing that if Tarek misbehaves, all prisoners will face consequences. After they leave, Steinhoff calls Tarek foolish for refusing to back down, but the man and claims he has another plan to get out. Meanwhile, Dora arrives in Tarek's place in search of him. 
convinced that meeting him after her father's death might mean something. Instead, she discovers his keys in the mailbox and uses them to enter his unit. This confirms to her that he's been away. In the prison, the prisoners are instructed to write letters to their significant others. Unbeknownst to them, Tarek uses the chance to hide a piece of paper in his clothes. He then discovers that Shute has no one to write to, so he provides his address, suggesting that the man write to him instead. In the control room, Professor Tan's team reviews footage of the guards taking Tarek to the basement. He then reprimands Lars for failing to notice this while Dr. Grimm worries about the events happening in just four days. Still, Professor Tan reassures her it's simply a power struggle between Tarek and Barris. In their prison cell, Tarek asks Steinhoff to help him expose the experiment. His cellmate declines, cautioning him against escalating their situation since it might endanger the others. Later, Joe suffers a panic attack and begs to leave the experiment, even if it means not getting paid. However, Professor Tan postpones the decision until the next day despite Joe's insistence on leaving now. Meanwhile, Dora spends the day in Tarek's home to look into his belongings, daydreaming about him. Upon returning, the guards punish Joe by undressing him to deter others from withdrawing. This causes Prisoner 53 to have a panic attack as well. As the guards try to calm him, Camps gets accidentally hit, so Barrows harms Prisoner 53 before taking him away. Seeing this reaction, Dr. Grimm advises Professor Tan to remove Barris to prevent things from worsening. The professor argues that removing him would mean ending the experiment because of his dynamic with Tarek. Despite this, Dr. Grimm later catches up to Barrus while he's heading home. She warns him against hitting another prisoner, but the man defends that it's necessary for restoring peace. He then insists he'll only take the warning seriously if it comes directly from the professor. That night, Tarek dreams about Dora but can't hear what she's saying. This causes him to panic upon waking up, feeling like he's losing his sense of reality because of the experiment. Steinhoff quietly calms him down, and Tarek asks him again to help expose the experiment. However, Steinhoff still refuses. On day 5, Tarek discovers that Joe's condition has worsened, so he calls for the guards despite his cellmate's belief that they'll kill him. Later that day, Berus announces that Joe and Prisoner 53 are out, so they have a new cell in the form of an airtight safe called the Black Box. Tarek eyes the safe worriedly as the guards add that it's visitation day, though Shute won't have any visitors due to having no friends. Berus knows this since they read Shute's letter to Tarek. Angered, Tarek moves to hit Berus but stops himself. Still, the guard interprets it as an attempted attack, so he orders Tarek to clean the toilets with his clothes before meeting visitors. Seeing the black box on the surveillance, Dr. Grimm confronts the professor, horrified that he allowed it to be used. Professor Ton argues it's for psychological pressure, but the woman worries about losing control of the experiment. Meanwhile, Tarek does his task but is forced to wear the same clothes he used to clean. Because of this, Berus bans him from seeing visitors for being smelly. Overwhelmed, Tarek cries after being left alone in his cell. To his luck, Bosch arrives with a clean prison dress, letting Tarek meet his visitor. While heading to the visiting area, the prisoner asks Bosch to meet his visitor in the cafeteria and deliver the letter he wrote secretly. The guard hesitates but ultimately agrees. Tarek is then surprised to find his visitor is Dora, who saw his contract in his apartment and convinced Ziegler to let her be his visitor instead. Dora urges him to quit so they can be together before she leaves for Canada, but he insists on continuing with his plan. He then directs her to the cafeteria where a guard will give her a message for Ziegler. However, when she goes there later, Berus intercepts Bosch and informs Dora that Tarek has changed his mind about the message, prompting the woman to leave. Later that night, Dr. Grimm informs Eckert that Professor Tan won't return until the next day, so she's now in charge. She warns him that she can stop the experiment if it keeps escalating. Berus soon learns this, along with Tarek's plan to expose the experiment. Still, he thinks they're all part of the test to observe their responses to outside disruptions. With this, they proceed to punish Bosch for trying to deliver Tarek's message, which Lars discovers from the control room. He attempts to call Professor Tan to stop this, only for the guards to seize him too. Berus takes Bosch to the prison, accusing him and Tarek of being threats. He then suggests having an intimate encounter with Dora to provoke the prisoner. Angered, Tarek retaliates but is stopped by the guards, who then beat him. Seeing this, Steinhoff yells to the cameras to stop the experiment, unaware that no one's in the control room anymore. Berus then orders Tarek to be put in the black box, triggering the prisoner's claustrophobia. In his protest, Chute insults Barris, so the guard knocks him out. This earns a shocked look from his comrades, who were also surprised by the brutality. Still, they obey when Berus orders them to take Tarek into the black box. Inside the safe, Tarek struggles and holds on to thoughts about Dora to calm himself. Soon, he checks the space for an 
escape and unexpectedly finds a screwdriver inside. Meanwhile, Dora gets suspicious about the experiment and attempts to call the facility, but there's no answer. While the guards carry on with their day, the prisoners are gagged with duct tape in their mouths while a bleeding Shute is bound to a chair in the hallway. Eventually, Dr. Grimm returns to the facility and discovers Lars and Bosch in the prison cell via the surveillance feed. Berus and Eckert then confront her, directing her to contact the professor. Surprised, she informs the guards that the professor is unavailable and declares that the experiment is over. Still believing that it's part of the test, Berus orders Eckert to bring Dr. Grimm to prison. While Eckert commands the scientist to change into a prison dress, Berus uses her documents to change the entrance passcode. Meanwhile, in a conference, Professor Ton finally checks his voicemail and hears Lars warning about the guards. Alarmed, the professor rushes to the facility. At the prison, Berus locks Dr. Grimm into a cell while Steinhoff notices a bound Shute struggling to breathe due to his injuries. Amidst the violent events, Caps questions Berus' claim about everything being a test. He considers quitting, but Berus suggests waiting for the professor's return before making a decision. The volatile leader then notices Dora outside the cafeteria. She threatens to call the police if they don't let her speak to Tarek, so the guard allows her in, stating that he'll arrange a secret meeting. At the prison, Ecker tries to harm Dr. Grimm, only to hear Tarek escaping from the safe. The prisoner then attacks him, and Steinhoff restrains the cruel guard. Finally free, the two work on freeing their prison mates. To their dismay, however, they discover that Shute has already suffocated. With no time to mourn, Tarek unscrews the wall paneling of a cell to create an exit leading to the supply corridors. Upstairs, Barris guides Dora into the visitation room and asks to borrow her phone to keep her from calling for help. However, as he returns to the control room, he discovers the prisoner's escape. He alerts the other guards, prompting them to hurry to the cells, only for Steinhoff to lock them out before escaping with Tarek. While fleeing with the prisoners, Bosch struggles to keep up and hides in a restroom. Soon, the guards corner the rest of the prisoners and subdue them. Just then, Professor Ton arrives but finds the entry's passcode changed. He then takes an alternative route through the medical bay but encounters Eckert, who accidentally injures him with his gas gun. Upon hearing the gunshot, Bosch checks and encounters Eckert, who chases him. The guilty guard assures the prisoner that the experiment is over, but in confusion, Bosch strikes him with a fire extinguisher repeatedly. Alerted by the commotion, Dora finds them, horrified by the sight. This leads her to realize the gravity of the situation, so she takes Eckert's gas gun. When Tarek and Steinhoff reach the medical bay, they encounter Barris and other guards at the exit, leading to a scuffle. The pilot disables two guards but gets outnumbered and restrained. Meanwhile, Tarek overpowers Barris and disarms him. Just then, Dora fires a warning shot, stopping the fight. However, the distraction allows Barris to grab a knife. Luckily, Tarek stops his attacks. Seeing what the experiment has led to, Barris blames the man for starting everything, making Tarek realize how his action might have caused all the chaos. Still, Steinhoff blames Barris for Shute's death, so he chokes him until Tarek intervenes, refusing to devolve into violence any further. Finally free, the subjects gather in the basement, where they await medical attention. Soon, news about the experiment spreads, with the casualties being Shute and Eckert. Because of this, the professor and his team face legal charges. Days after the horrors, Tarek and Dora find their escape on a beach as they heal from the trauma they now share. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.